my name is Carol Ricard, and thank you so much for watching this episode. I'm really excited you're tuned in today because I'm going to continue my conversation and my discussion about the most powerful emotion there is, anger. And in case this is your first time tuning in, you know, on I Am Not Cancer, really what we try to do is just to inspire and to inform and to really empower people. Um, you know, those who may be living with cancer and those whose, you know, kind of lives have ever been touched by cancer. And so last week, or at least on our last episode, we kind of got part way through because anger, there's just so much, I can't get it all into 30 minutes. And so I'm just continuing with this episode, kind of what we started. Now, just in case you, this, you didn't get to the last episode, and you're tuning in, I'm going to kind of catch you up to speed. All right. What I talked about was that anger, you know, there's three primary ways or I like to call them sort of archetypes that we can fall under. The first one I call boiler, all right? And that is you're kind of like that person, like that pot on a stove, and it just sort of like boils over when it reaches its, you know, kind of boiling point, and it makes a little mess. But then I talked about the exploder, and that's somebody that when the anger comes out and, and they kind of get to the can't hold any more in, it sort of explodes out. And really, it's kind of like a stick of dynamite going off and it creates harm and damage to relationships or sometimes even physical space. But there's one more, and that is the person who is the imploder. And that's the person who just kind of holds everything inside and it really never comes out. But they tend to then make themselves sick. Um, I used to be one of those imploders. And for me, it was anxiety and migraines that would actually end up happening. Um, and so that was kind of the first step. The other thing we did, and I'm going to refer flip the page here. is that I talked about how each one of us has an anger vocabulary. And that is, it's the same big emotion, but it's what are the other degrees or words that you would use to describe it. And this was an action sheet. And if you go to IamNotCancer.live, you'll see it right up there at the top of the page. Just click the download and you can download and what it is is it's a blank sheet just like this i want you to try and think of as many words as you could use but then there's also a key and you could just go through this key and if you see any words on there that are you well then you add them on your list because here's the thing in order to do something about the anger you have to be able to recognize it and i'm going to give you an example all right, take a bottle of root beer and it gets shook up, right? Well, that foam tells you, be careful, right? It's telling you that there is pressure that is built up inside that body. Well, by us becoming familiar with the different intensities or degrees of our anger, and more important, the words we would use, it helps us then be able to recognize it and then do something about it, if that makes sense. So that is what we're talking about today. What do you do about it then? All right. If you don't hold it in and you don't let it spill out and kind of explode out, what do you do with it? And it's really kind of simple. The first step, all right, is we got to identify what is your pattern. And here's what I mean by that. I'm going to. So if you happen to be 
that boiler, all right, so you get to a boiling point or an explosion point. So there are basically two worksheets, um, you know, that, that I'm going to have that for you guys to do. The first example is the exploder, okay? And okay, so that's my that's my dynamite, all right. What we want to do is begin to recognize patterns, and there's two ways you can do this. There's the usual, or you can think of a very specific situation you know, that you would like to get better control on with your anger and use that. But here's the trick. What you need to be able to think about is what is the first thing that happens to you? So using your vocabulary list, what is the trigger? So I'm just going to put it there. And then what do you notice happens after that? And so maybe there's another and then another and then another and another right before you explode so what we're identifying really is our anger patterns now if you're an explode i mean the boiler or the imploder what it really is is a thermometer right imagine this you know it's a thermometer and what ends up happening is it's how we start so what we do is we start low and let me give an example of how this might go all right and the most important part is there is no right or wrong way to do this but um, I'm just thinking back to many, many times I've done this with my patients over the 30 years that I was working in hospitals and teaching this. So for a boiler, this person would get upset. And then what would happen is they would get mad. Then So this particular person I'm thinking of, what happened for them is they would get upset to start. And then from upset, it would go to feeling mad. And then from feeling mad, it would go to feeling very stressed. And then from stressed, it would go to feeling sad. And then from sad, it went to depressed. Now, Sometimes people don't take all those steps and maybe you, not you. I've had people who, in fact, let me use red. So kind of delineate this is. It was three steps. What happened was mad. Then. They got so that it only went three steps. So everybody is very different. And it really is spending some time sort of reflecting on this. Now, for the exploder, so you're going to do. So this is this is the imploders or the boilers. And in fact, there's kind of an action sheet that you can do. So you can see here, right? What is your implosion point? And then what is, oh, wrong one. Sorry, you guys. This one is what is your boiling point and if you're an exploder all right maybe it starts with
So for this particular client, I remember, and you may not be able to see that at the top, it says mad. And then they would get annoyed. Then they would get pissed off. Then they would get stressed. And then they would get to rage. And when they got to rage, that was actually when <sighs> kind of things blew off. But I've also had other people who I've had other people who didn't have a very long fuse and they would just go from mad to rage. And so it's part of it is identifying what your pattern is. And no two people have the exact identical pattern. It's very, very individualized. The other thing that we want to begin to think about is how long how long do you have to work with before right the the bottom drops out so in this case how long until you explode once the fuse gets lit do you have a really short fuse kind of like this person here or do you have a longer fuse like this person over here and you could even be somewhere in the middle quite honestly for imploders or boilers, you know, the question is, are you a slow boiler or are you a fast boiler? You know, and sometimes, you know, it happens on the stove. If you ever put a pan on the stove, even pans that are really low, if they stay on there long enough, they can end up boiling over and just creating this really big mess to clean up. Or you can crank the heat up on it and all of a sudden it goes from whoop to just boiling over in no time at all. So there's two things we're kind of needing to identify. One is what is your pattern, right? Because in the last show, you kind of had to pick one of the two and work on your vocabulary. This episode is really about what is your pattern and how long do you have before Quite honestly, all hell breaks loose, right? And that would be even for the imploder like myself. I was a slow imploder, meaning that I would hold stuff in for a really long time. In fact, at work, what used to happen is I could get all the way from Monday to Thursday. But on Thursday, that's when the migraines would actually send me home from work because I just felt so sick to my stomach and I just had to crawl into bed after I stopped at my doctor's office on the way home. All right. So that is your first assignment. Figure out your pattern because we need to use it now in our next assignment. All right. Make sense. So what we're really trying to do is begin to notice you know, when is this pressure building up? Because people, quite honestly, are just like bottles of root beer. Life kind of does this to us, right? And the pressure will build up inside. And if we do nothing about it, it will keep building, 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 building. And that's the point. We get to the point where some people just explode and it comes out and they have no control over it. And then, quite honestly, my experience has been that a lot of people really feel badly when that happens and you know, wish that they didn't do it, wish that they hadn't said things that were super, super hurtful because you can't take those words back once they're said, right? You can't undo something in somebody's mind when they've seen you sort of flip out or they've seen you break things. Um, and the goal of this whole bottle, right, is to recognize when the pressure's building and then to do something to actually release it. 
And that's actually what we need to work on in our next step, if that makes sense. All right. So that's your action assignment, right, for this episode. Take these downloads, figure out what is your pattern, right? And there's the exploder. And then we have to do something about it because what we really want to do is we want to, in fact, let me get it, one other color pen. What we want to do is if the fuse gets lit, we want to kind of interrupt the process so that it doesn't continue. So when this fuse gets lit, you know what? As long as we can interrupt that and kind of when it comes to boilers or exploders, what we really have to do is catch it and then start to cool it off, right? Keep it from going any further. So keep it from going any further so that we don't end up at the same place every time with our anger. Does that make sense? Hopefully that does. Now, here's the thing. Once we've kind of identified our pattern, now we got to do something about it. And this is the secret that I discovered 20 years ago when my migraines were really, really causing me problems at work. In fact, I thought I was probably going to end up having to leave my dream job because it seemed one week, two weeks, three weeks. Not only did I have to leave work, but I also had to go to the doctor um, and then go home and then crawl into bed. And so when I came back that next week, I decided that I needed to do something different. And you see, I didn't have a lot of time during my work day. I've worked in a hospital, so I didn't get to control what happened, right? But the other thing was, is I didn't get to control my time. And so I would usually eat my lunch, you know, at my desk while I was doing some work. Um, I didn't have it as bad as some of the nurses, you know, on some of the other floors, where if you talk to a nurse, you know, just getting the time to go to the bathroom is sometimes a real challenge. But what I started doing was taking the tools that I was teaching my patients and just doing them for 15 or 30 seconds. All right. I could do 15 or 30 seconds. I couldn't get outside for a 10 minute walk. Just wasn't going to happen. And I was exercising. I, I would go to the gym after work, right? But that didn't help because the migraines would hit me in the afternoon while I was still at work. So I needed to come up with things to do in the moment. And that actually led me to discover what I call uh, rapid relief therapy. Because we need to be able to do something at any moment, almost, as I like to say, is anytime, anywhere. You never know if you're going to be close to that imploding or that boiling or that exploding. And so this rapid relief therapy gives you the power to do anything, to do something instantly and begin to get control of the situation. So there are basically two steps that we have to take. And it's as simple as, stop and then release. So imagine, right? Even a tub. I showed you the soda bottle. But imagine that the tub gets turned on in the morning and then you don't shut it off until you come home at night. What would happen? 
right? You would come home to a mess because it would hit overflow. Well, we, when life shakes us up, when stress happens, when situations happen that we can't control, that level starts to rise in us. And the first thing that we have to do is stop it, right? Because that you don't want the flow to keep flowing. So we stop it, but that's not enough because then what we have to do is we have to release a little bit that's built up because how do you know that somebody's not going to come along or something's not going to come along and turn it back on and then it start to rise up. And so what we're actually doing is a two step process. We are stopping and then we are releasing. Now, here's the big secret about this system is that it actually requires two different types of things. When we stop, what we want to do or everything and anything for you that is calming, but that is also very passive. So, What I mean by passive is that it doesn't require muscles or energy, all right? You can just do it. So some examples, if you look at this slide right now, right? Some examples on this slide, you're going to see reading or taking a, a bath or a shower or just breathing. It could be um, kind of taking a time out or saying the serenity prayer, or even kind of saying another kind of prayer, all right? But all of these things you can do that do not require any muscles or energy be used in doing them, all right? Now, what happens on step two, though, is this has to be active. This requires muscles. And so if you look at all of the examples on this slide, what you're actually going to see is everything on this single pe on this side actually requires muscles or energy. And that's why exercise, you always hear it, you know, exercise is so good for us. Well, it's good for our heart and our health, but it's also good for our emotions because when we are exercising, we are actually creating that release. Or it could be singing with the music. But here's the thing. It has to be things that we can always have access to. So, for example, my quick three for stop are breathing because i can always slow down my breathing it is self-talk so i can stop start instead of me kind of saying oh carol you're so stupid it's saying carol you're learning and then the last one for me is the serenity prayer and just repeating it over in my head and that is god grant me the serenity to accept the things i cannot change the courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. But it's finding out what will work for you because what works for me doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to work for you, right? And then my quick three for stopping are to walk, talk, or write. I can always walk because even if I'm sitting in a meeting, I can actually be sitting in a chair, picking up my feet and just moving them. So I'm getting rid of and releasing some of that built up emotion and energy. Or one of the things that I can do is, you know, talk and tell off my boss when I'm really pissed off at them. Although I don't do it when they're around, I just have this sort of kind of, I call it the empty chair method, where you just have this conversation and you let it out. But here's the trick. You got to know that you have to do the stop before you do the release. All right. That means you always have to do something calming 
and then you want to follow it up with something release now i told you walk talk my other one is to write or to dump so what it is is it taking a dump is you take a piece of paper you just start writing all right but here's the thing you don't read what you wrote and then you just destroy it it has to be paper it can't be your computer it can't be your phone because we're trying to release so our brain and our hand have to be connected in knowing what we're releasing the key here is don't read what you wrote which makes it very different than journaling so i call it taking a brain dump or the dump and destroy you know whichever one sort of resonates with you but i want you to realize you don't have to even use words so i had a girlfriend who was really really struggling all right because she had um, lost her mom and so the anger and the grief kind of was just sort of causing her to be more depressed and so what it was i said to her just take some markers right and i gave her the box markers i said all i want you to do is just scribble just pick colors scribble whatever you pick is good now she thought i was kind of nuts at the time but she gave it a try and she said carol it really worked because she couldn't put her, her her words she didn't know the words to write how she was feeling so these are a couple of the images that she did that is one and then this was another one and after a while she used this as a tool just during her day and you can see at least this one's not quite as dark and red as the last one right so just to kind of like review what we talked about first we need to identify what our anger pattern is and how much time do we have to work with so if you're the exploder that's the tnt if you're the imploder or the boiler that's the thermometer all right and then once you have that pattern you want to kind of work on what are your stop and releases and you always want to have a couple that you can use and what i want to do is um oh my goodness i was looking for the postcard because i actually put together a little postcard for you guys hmm i don't know where it went okay well right now you are looking at a slide of the postcard all right because i also want you to print this out and put it places where you can use it at home in your car in your office all right so you're going to i am not cancer dot live for all of these handouts and i just want to invite you to come back and join us again on the next episode Thank you.